week we are going to sunny Cabo San Lucas with the family. A few months ago the family was here in uh, our hometown Clearwater Beach and uh, we went out fishing. Since they're from up north they don't catch fish like we have here. They catch stuff like uh, I don't know what they got, perch. They, we anyway, small fish. They're here it's a little bit bigger. Um, we catch like there's reds out in the bay, there's snook. Um, we could also go out into uh, the Gulf of Mexico and catch a few uh, a grouper and king mackerel, some big fish, but nothing like what you catch in Cabo San Lucas. After the fishing trip, we were uh, we all were sitting together back here at the house and we were talking about the fish that we caught, how great it was. It, I, um, Lisa's nephew caught a, a great big red. It was a good sized red. Um, and I was telling him about this story uh, when my brother and I several years ago went to Cabo San Lucas there you catch uh, really big fish like uh, uh, Marlin um, so We decided that maybe Cabo San Lucas might be the place to go Well that someday is now guys our family is kind of a multi-generational uh, family and um, we found that Cabo San Lucas kind of has a little bit for everyone fishing the beach snorkeling uh, and of course, that world-class fishing. On this trip, we'll show you uh, where, we are, where we're gonna stay. Uh, we'll show you the restaurants that we're uh, going to eat in and uh, whatever activities that we, we come up with. I think we're gonna do quite a bit. We're gonna um, try a little snorkeling. Of course, we're gonna do that world-class world fishing. You'll wanna, you'll wanna be here for that. I'm sure we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna uh, aim for is marlin, of course. Uh, that's what we're going there for. We'll also be sure to give you a few tips along the way. Um, it seems like we always learn something new every time we go uh, somewhere new. And uh, it's always nice to have those tips. So you know where, um, where we went wrong or we went right. And uh, we'll let you know every step of the way. So pack your bags, we're going to Cabo. So we now have completed step one, which is the basic. So who's traveling? What dates do we wanna go? We've also completed step two, which is what kind of travel style do we have for this vacation? And in this case, it's fishing, it's we want to have activities and a lot of things for people to do. And so then we had to go on to step three, which was pick the destination. And that's how we ended up with Cabo San Lucas as the perfect destination for our multi-generational trip. Now we're on step four, which is what is the perfect place to stay? And that can become kind kind of complicated because there's so many options out there. And we have to figure out what's best for the group that's traveling. So I spent a lot of time researching and trying to figure out what was the best place to stay for our group of people. And I think I found it. So I chose Casa Dorado. It's a beachfront location. It's in a swimmable beach in, in Cabo San Lucas, which is important because not all the beaches are. It's within walking distance to the marina, so everybody can go and do that whenever they want to. They can pick up their fishing charters or our snorkeling charters. And then it's nearby a ton of restaurants and a lot of places to go out and um, bars on the beach and things to do. So for our large group that has a diverse interest in things, I decided that Casa Dorado was gonna be the, our perfect place to stay. I chose Casa Dorado for a few reasons. One, the price was right. Two, we were able to get two two-bedroom condos which accommodated everybody easily and each of the condos had full kitchens. Three, it was on a swimmable beach and not all beaches in Cabo San Lucas are swimmable so this was an important feature for us. Four, it was direct beachfront views so we actually looked out right over the water as well as over the rocks where the arches in Cabo. Five, we could easily walk to the marina to pick up the charters for the fishing trips and the snorkel trips. And six, there were nearby restaurants, a ton to choose from, which I hope are fabulous. And seven, we're also nearby a lot of places where 
people go out at night. So there's a lot of options to choose from for the younger people who wanna go out after the rest of us are ready to go to sleep. So I hope we picked a good place. We'll find out soon, as soon as we get to Cabo. If you haven't already- Although it's on video. Belt, oh. So the metal end after into a the buckle, and one hour delay, we're head. finally on our you way. Your Cabo. Belt, well, to our layover. Let's hope we make it. Let's hope we make our, our uh, right. connecting Whenever flight. Here we go. Hi everybody, we made it to Cabo San Lucas. Yay, in the line for customs, here we go. The, in the line for customs. So, it's, it's actually a short line. Here we go. Let's enjoy our trip. Okay. We have arrived in Cabo San Lucas. All right, here we go. One thing we learned while we were in Cabo is that transportation you need to make arrangements before you go. Uber is not allowed to pick you up at the airport, so you'll need to find some alt or the transportation that's already there in place. You'd rather it be a bus to take you over to Cabo San Lucas, a taxi, or like what we did, we chartered a van uh, because we had 10 people. I'm excited to show you the room we've got. It's actually beachfront, so come on in, let's take a look. What's super cool about this place is it has an entirely full kitchen. It's got a full-size fridge, sink. It even comes with some alcohol that you can buy, coffee pot, so you can go to the store, stock up, and be ready to go for the week without having to buy every meal out. Come on, let's keep going. We've got a dining room here, so we've got service for sitting everybody down to have a meal together. We actually have so many people here, we needed an extra bed, which they did free of charge, which is super nice. And then coming this way, we've got a living area, and that is a sofa sleeper there. So that is also a um, benefit of staying here. Now, this is what's so amazing about this place. So here we are, look at that blue water. Look at all the boats out there. The arch is right over this direction, and we're gonna go see it tomorrow on a boat, so we'll show you what that looks like. But the view here is just absolutely incredible. Oops, we can just open this up. We'll step outside for a second. So there's a lounge chair, there's a table to sit. You've got the amazing view. Let's come forward here, I just want to show you. Let's kind of look over this. We've got the beach right there, but what I kind of like about the hedge is not everybody's looking into our room all the time. So we've got some privacy, but we've got this amazing view. And when you look over there, that's the restaurant. So there's um, a restaurant right there, and then the beach access is also there. Come on, let's go back here. I'll show you the bedrooms. This is actually a huge space. It only sleeps six people, seven or eight maybe you can fit in here. Um, but it's crazy how much space there is. Like, we're actually not on top of each other. And I was a little worried about that being on vacation. You don't want to be on vacation with a whole bunch of people and like have no room to breathe. And this is a very spacious condo. Now we've got a few things out because we did move in and we didn't get a pic did a chance to do the video before, but this is the king suite. So there's a king bed and there's an entirely private bath, which I'll show you on the way out. And then on this side of the condo, so the second bedroom actually has two queen beds in it. And so there's this one. It also has its own private balcony. So you can sit out there. Um, also has the water views on the balcony, a little sitting area and I'll just show you the bathrooms and we'll be set. Because these are can be two different rooms, this also has a mini kitchen here um, that you can also have with a little fridge and sink, even a stove cooktop here. Toaster oven, microwave, it's a great little area to prepare some quick meals. And then in here's the bathroom and then actually the shower with a full tub and then I'll show you the other bathroom and we'll be done. And this is a bathroom actually anybody can access from both both doors from the master and not from the master. So this is the extra bathroom here. It's got a walk-in shower, which is nice. And then the toilet's right there. And when you keep going through, it's actually got one of the biggest um, tubs I've ever seen. Like, I don't know, we may have to have a party in here later just to show you how many people can fit in this thing. <laughs> All right, that's our condo, Casa Dorado. We recommend it, come stay here. So here's another tip. When you come to these resorts, if you don't know this already, and you might already, but um, when you come to the pool, you get, everybody gets to the pool um, at like 6 a.m. To, to stake their claim on their lounge chair. So you want to 
a lounge chair. You can see right here they're all got towels on them, which means that these have already been state claims on their uh, on their lounge. So you want to come early and get your if you want to hang around the pool. I mean, you get a lot of beach out there. There's a lot of water, a lot of activities. We didn't spend much time around the pool um, when there's this beautiful, this much beauty in the area. Okay, tonight's our first night in Cabo San Lucas. Tonight, we're eating at a place called The Office. You know, it it's, looks like it's kind of part of our hotel. And I can't remember the name of the hotel, but I'll show you that later. I'll take some pictures of our meal, show you what it's like. But for now, I'm gonna go eat. It's been all day. these bread things. What is that? That's the soup. Not a glass bottom boat. This is a glass boat. So a fishing boat like this, which holds up to 10 people, is $6,000 for a 10 hour day. Which, if you divide that by 10 people, that's not bad. And you're on, you're in class act fishing there. That's, that's about as best it's gonna get. Here's kind of an example of how many water taxis there are that'll take you out to uh, some of these beaches that are accessible by foot. Usually 10 to $12 per person 
round trip. So now that we've um, been to Cabo and we've kind of seen uh, what kind of happens here, what I would do um, when coming here for like fishing excursions or whatever, um, get here um, and then come in the morning and look or just talk to the vendors. There's vendors everywhere. Everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants to uh, sell you their boat. Uh, what I would do is um, talk to some of them, get to see their boat, and then decide, um, and then maybe see a few. Don't don't just go with the first one. I would see a few and look at the boat, look at the price. There's different prices everywhere. They all charge between 600 and a thousand for a like a normal six person boat. Um, I've seen it go as low as 300 for four people on a small boat, go fishing, but I don't think they take you out quite as far. Um, and you're probably not gonna catch the big trophy fish like the marlin. Um, uh, so that's kind of how I would approach it, I think. Come the day before, the day before you're gonna go fishing and kind of bargain with, um, with them a little bit, see their boat, see if you like their boat, because uh, there's literally thousands to choose from it's incredible there are so many fishing boats here that you could choose from anywhere from three hundred dollars for a, a short half day to i saw a boat um a guy was telling me it was six thousand dollars for up to ten people and it's a 10 hour trip so it's you're gonna go out and catch great fish and just have a, a luxury you're gonna be there uh fishing be a luxury which is kind of so that's kind of the way i would so this first big boat on the right is kind of just a party boat, um, $2,500 an hour. And you go out, it's a minimum three hours to go out. And um, you just they tell them wherever you want to go, they'll take you kind of a thing. Uh, just You're just in the restriction of time. Uh, so that was kind of a party boat. The run next to it to the left there, that's the one I took a picture earlier. That one's $6,000 for an all day fishing excursion. If you want to go class act. I'm gonna try to get on some of these boats and see if I can take some pictures. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Um, it's not really easy to, to get on and because you know, the, the owners aren't necessarily here. You have the, I call them brokers, the people who are brokering all the boats. Um, um, I just right down here at these gates, right? So here's a, there's a day to get on, they're all locked. You can't get onto the boats, of course, because they're all, I mean, these are high-end, high, high-end high boats. They don't want you. Uh, people just walking around down in there, of course. But um, yeah, you want to go fishing, you want to go class act down here. I, you could do, like I said before, you could do anything from 300 for a small fishing trip to, to 6,000 for a, a, a class act fishing trip. So it's kind of up to you. I mean, these are a lot of beautiful boats down here and they are for rent on excursions. So here we have a, a seal taking a siesta in the morning out on the, out on the dock. You see these guys are everywhere down here. So I can't get a real good picture of this boat, but I'm gonna call this one the Despicable Me. <laughs> it goes way out the back low and is really big out the front. I wish I'd get a better picture of this kind of funny looking boat. Don't know what it is, kind of interesting. So when you go out fishing, you wanna stop at the supermarket out here in the marina to pick up your water, food, of course beer, tequila if you need it. There's the marina. Okay, good morning everybody. We're headed out on a fishing trip today. We're at uh, Jonathan here. He's got us all set up with a boat. We're gonna go out with Jose. We're gonna see, see. we're gonna see if Jonathan uh, knows his stuff and can set us up with the right person. I think we probably did. I think uh, I think Jose's gonna take us out and do a good fishing. It's gonna be an all day or we'll see what we get out there. All right, perfect. I'll give you Jose, I'll give you Jonathan's number and you can call him directly before you come down to Cabo San Lucas. So we're headed out on our uh, our boat trip and uh, the starter went out, but we're gonna have a great day. Here it goes. Now we're starting the boat. So there's our guy working down there. That's our engine. <laughs> but that's okay, we're gonna have a good fishing day. Okay, one hour delay and uh, a couple coffees later. You hear that? And sound, that's the sound of an engine running. So this is good, we're going fishing. So 
first things first, when you go out fishing in Cabo, you're first you have to get your license, of course. And then these guys are uh, the bait, right? So they go out, they catch bait, and then they bring them to the boat, and then we buy the bait from them. We paid uh, $60 today for our bait. The license, by the way, that we'll do that in here in a little bit, there's the bait. We'll do that in just a little bit. The uh, fishing license is $20 per person. So today we have six people. So my fam Lisa's family, that's Bobby, Richard, my brother. And uh, there's Lisa's dad, that's Chuck. Lisa's nephew back there in the back, that's uh, Taylor. And then Holly is uh, stepmom. So this is our, oh, here's our, our captain up there. That's Jose. And we'll be heading out here real shortly. We we had a little bit of a delay today um, because we had to put a new starter, had put a new starter in our boat. Um, but we're off and we're doing good. There's our bait. Now that's where these are the guys that are going to catch our big guys. Little guys catching the big guys. So we were invited up with the captain to go see the view up above. Chuck, we're gonna go over here. This is the beaches that we'll be swimming on later on. See right there where the buoys are? Over here, that's where, um, that's kind of the little swimming area. I think tomorrow we go. Snorkeling. Hi, Holly. So this is our captain, Jose. He's gonna take us out and show us how to catch fish today. Yeah, for sure. All right. Fish, come back. Big fish, we're excited. This is our first sea lion of the day. He's he's taking a nap. Right there you go. There this is Turtle Rock. You guys see you tell me if you see a turtle there. I think I, he's like standing up. Kind of turtle. Lovers Beach. And then you're going to see just in a second here. It's a short little walk between the rocks and on the other side you go to Devore's Beach. We're gonna do this later on, guys. We'll go, um, we have an excursion. We're gonna to come to this beach. We'll come check that out. Okay, I think we're coming up on the arch. The famous arch of Cabo San Lucas. And there it is. There's, see, there's the arch, guys. We're gonna come back and do this again. Oops, easy. And then over here, we have sea lions. They're getting, they're just resting today and then they're gonna come and uh, troll the boats for a handouts later on. We got a mahi mahi. There he is. So look how beautiful that fish is, huh? Woo! There he jumped. Three on. Yeah. Oh man, that's a nice one. You can tell when he's he had something. Oh my god, we got fish on everywhere! There he is. Oh, 
Look at him. He's loose. He's loose. <laughs> Okay, we're having mahi mahi for dinner. Bobby! Woo! Marlin time! Look at that sucker jump. You're at the end of the fight, buddy. You can do it. It's a big one. Yeah, it is. Okay, Tyler, you ready? Okay, hold on, Tyler. Hold on to him. Look, there he is. Okay, today was a fabulous success fishing. Tonight we are at our hotel restaurant called 12 Tribes, and we're at the uh, Casa Dorada. Um, tonight we're gonna eat the fish that we caught, which is nice, so they're gonna cook it up for us. We're, I'll let you know how that tastes. So um, today we caught Dorado, or uh, also known as uh, Mahi Mahi. And we have, so we're eating that tonight, so we're having Mahi Mahi. And the other one is um, uh, striped marlin that we're gonna try. So we'll see what that tastes like. I'll show you later on once we get there.
So I told you I like to have really good meals when I go on vacation. And we picked, actually we didn't, I picked the Baja Brewing Company. I figured that the guys would really like the fact that it was a local brew place and that it had amazing views and that we could also get dinner, which wasn't too expensive. Well, we got two of the three. The brewery was there and the brews were actually really good. The views were incredible. It was amazing. Honestly, like perfect place to sit and watch the water and everything. But the food was really left something to be desired. We had 10 people eating and everybody tried something and it was mediocre at best. So definitely go there, have a few brews, enjoy the view, but don't expect to get a great meal while you're there. We're going to start with your name is? Holly. 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 And we go. Oh, got okay. yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's weird. And uh, your name is Lisa. Lisa, hold these two, please. Close your hand. Now, Lisa, repeat after me. Uno. Uno. Dos. 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 Tres. Tres. Open it. <laughs> That's very good. Now, if I take it, if I put one in the in the pocket, one, two in your hand, and one in the pocket, how many balls in my hand? One. No, no, you're the other one. <laughs> Pocket. Hand. Pocket. How many? Five. Oh, no, God, okay, okay, not finished. Let's uh, try some cards. So I'm gonna turn my back. Do me a favor. Pick one card, take a look, show it to everybody. Anyone you want. Okay. Okay, got it. Yeah? Yeah. Everybody have a yeah. Yeah. Oh, Tell me stop whenever you want. Okay. Right? Is that it? Remember what it is, yes? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna try to find a car. I think I got it, I got the aerospace. Oh, no. Alright, we're gonna go this. Uh, well guys, have a beautiful night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay. Okay, cheers to Mexican breakfast. There we go, Mexican breakfast. Hey, can you see in the background? In the background? Are the seals of Pablo San Lucas? <laughs> so we're getting off the water taxi. What's the water taxi name? What's the, what's the name of your company? Natalia's Water Sport. All right, everybody's getting off on Lover's Beach. Lover's Beach. As you can see, the cruise ships all come in here too. These, these are three today, and there were two yesterday. So they come in one right after another. And here it looks like there's, you could take a kayak tour over here. I think it'd be a long ways to kayak unless they started on a boat. I don't know, interesting though. So this is the Sea of Cortez side on Lover's Beach and very swimmable. People swimming out there, the water is like the Caribbean crystal clear water, it's beautiful. And then here's rocks on either side. Okay, so this is the Boris Beach. This is the Pacific Ocean. Now you can see it's got crazy waves that come in here. No swimming on this side. They actually have signs up that say no swimming. There's a red flag. I'm sure um, the uh, tide would pull you right out on this beach. These waves are huge. Looks like something somebody would go surfing in, but I don't see any surfers. I'll show you the water on the other side, which is the Sea of Cortez, and that's the Lover's Beach. So here we are on the beach of Cabo San Lucas. This is a special beach, right? So we're looking over my shoulder here. That is Lover's Beach and the Sea of Cortez in the background. And then this is kind of like the Cabo Continental Divide. 
Now we are looking at the Pacific Ocean behind me over my shoulder, and that is called Devore's Beach. Interesting, right? So getting on this thing is a little bit of a trick in the waves. But we can manage, I think. Okay, I think our water chariot has arrived and we are now leaving the Lover's Beach and Divorce Beach. So Richard and I wandered into a place here, uh, downtown Cabo, where it's, this is called Tequila Town. And they have 300 different kinds of tequila and they'll let you try tequila. Um, before you, so you try before you buy it. They don't sample all 300, but they have probably a good 300 uh, that they'll let you, or 100 that they'll let you sample. So, very good. I think Richard's buying it. I'm not sure if I am in or not, but I think Richard's definitely. So these are all the tequilas you can sample here before you buy. So try it before you buy. This is their Cuban selection. Okay, hello everyone. Here we are at the Swim Up Bar. At Cabo Azul. Cabo Azul. We're having a couple of mojitos in the afternoon. Join ourselves. Hey, let's take a look at the bar. Okay, here's Lisa with our mojitos. And we're gonna do a che cheers. To, to the to the cape. To the cape. Most cabos. Most cabos. The cape. Looks like Lisa has found a nest, a, a cubicle, or it's very cool. Hello. Very cool. Is it cozy? Very cozy. I was a little surprised at how good the shopping was in Cabo San Lucas. So it has your typical tourist places with, and tons of tourist places with lots of t-shirts and knickknacks and things to take home. And by the way, I always, always, always pick up a Christmas ornament when I'm on vacation. So we got the Christmas ornament, we did a few of the t-shirts um, and a few other things there. But what was surprising is they actually had a very, very large indoor mall. So when it's hot outside, it's a great place to go to. It's two stories. There's an amazing selection of high-end places there, including Swarovski, Pandora's, Billabong, 
the beach house, and as well as some really, really high-end shops. So just to let you know, if it gets a little warm out or the girls want to go shopping while the guys are going fishing, this is a good option. Okay, one thing you need to prepare for when you're in Cabo is to be approached by a salesperson every literally 20 steps. 20 steps. Look, we're on 19. Here we go. 20, right there. There's a guy trying to sell us his okay. restaurant. Here's another one. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there he is. There he is. The guy trying to get us in his restaurant. Perfect. Every 20 steps. <laughs> Tonight, we're eating at Cabo Wabo, and this is Rich, in Cabo San Lucas. It's gonna be good. Okay, we just ate at Cabo Wabo in Cabo San Lucas. Very good. You have to try Cabo Wabo. It's amazing. Great food, great entertainment, really cool atmosphere. Kind of a party atmosphere. Don't stay too late because the party really gets going after eight. Hey, we're getting ready to leave Casa Dorada. And this is our last meal here. We've eaten here a couple of times and it's phenomenal. There's the sign. It's called the Maidan. And the food is, is really good. It's some my of, first time here, by the way. Some of the places in Cabo are kind of, you know, they got a lot of good reviews, but the food's not exactly the best. But this place has been tops every time we've come here. So let's go have lunch. Oh, good. So I get a top lunch. Excellent. <laughs> Just outside of our hotel is where people get massages like it's a continuous massage going on up there there's it's so cheap it's only uh, forty dollars for an hour of massage Lisa got one done she said it was amazing so you just go up here you and there's there's if we look over here here's all the masseuses just lined up waiting to give you a massage hey everyone we are in San Jose del Cabo, and we are staying at the Cabo Azul Resort. This one is completely different than the other resort that we stayed at, much more modern, different location. The room is actually pretty incredible, so let's go check it out. So as we walk in, it's full kitchen, which is kind of cool, right? It's you're, you're on vacation, yes, but when you have families, you might want to cook breakfast or something, or even have dinner in, who knows? It doesn't matter, but uh, full-size microwave, popcorn, full-size refrigerator, leftovers. beverages, leftovers from the dinner before, you can have lunch the next day, and a dishwasher, so you clean up after yourself. Nice granite countertops. We have a uh, couch set over here, which is also a sofa sleeper, which allows you to sleep another two people in this place. We have a dining area, full TV, and these doors are incredible. So here you have doors that open up, double sliders all the way open. So it really is indoor, outdoor living in your own condo. 
here at Cabo Azul, which is a Hilton Vacation Club. Okay, so off to the left, where my brother Richard is sitting, there's seating, you can have a little, um, you have your breakfast, have coffee, whatever you want to do there. But this is what we all want, right? This is the view, that's the Sea of Cortez. This is a three-tiered pool area. It's the most, this, this pool area is ginormous. It's huge. So you never have to fight for room at the pool area. Plus there's actually um, seating out on the beach as well. So you could sit around the pool, you could sit around the beach. But you can't swim here. But you can't swim in the water, yeah, because it's too rough. We come in here to the sleeping area and what the first thing you notice is you've got this extra large door. So you can actually make sure that the sleeping area has a lot of privacy against the noise from out here if people want to stay up later and play cards or drink tequila or whatever people happen to do in Mexico. Come on in. Even with that big door, you have these nice doors here to the bedrooms. And then this is the master. Welcome to the master. King size bed. Love the decor and the aesthetics in this resort is actually phenomenal. And I have to say, I don't know that the website really does it justice because when I booked it, I was a little like, eh, I guess it'll be okay. And we got here and it feels very luxurious, very modern with a really great nod to the Mexican heritage here. So in the bedroom is an entire very deep tub here for two and that has a curtain here so you can have privacy if you wanna be in the tub, which is wonderful. And then out here, again, this is the second double slider, pushes all the way back so you've got this outdoor beautiful space here that you're looking right to the pool and also to the Sea of Cortez, which is right out there. It's, it's honestly phenomenal. Ceiling height is super high and it has this nice detail of the wood beams going across it. Then coming on in here, you've got a ensuite bathroom um, with a very large shower, a seat in the shower, and then a separate water closet over here. If we roll the camera just right this way, and we've got a separate water closet in here. So that makes for a nice, nice master bathroom. Let's go see the second side. This is the second bedroom. It's where the kids sleep, or my brother Richard. This is his bed. <laughs> it's queen size bed. It's nice too, but very simple. It's kind of a simple kind of, uh, the decorations are, are simple, but nice. And then coming in here, you've got the second bath, which has a very, very large corner shower in this room and a separate sink in the toilet in the bathroom here. And this is in the hallway so that anybody can access it. Honestly, I think that this property is really a two thumbs up. Sometimes we don't know till we show up but um, I really think this is a great choice. If you want to stay closer to San Jose del Cabo than Cabo San Lucas. So I'm kind of wondering if we call this a swingers bar. So we are now walking the beach in San Jose del Cabo. We're staying at the Cabo Azul Resort, which is right up here. We'll show you in a minute. Um, but we've moved locations just to try a different part of this area to see what it's like. And we, there's some big differences, I think. So there's some big differences between Cabo San Lucas and San Jose del Cabo where we are now. We tried both so we could see and let you guys know the differences. Um, before we get too far, there's some really cool horses that are gonna pass us here, so that's amazing. But first, um, Cabo San Lucas is the place where you should stay by the marina if you wanna be around a lot of people, if you wanna be nearby the activities, if you wanna have the walking to the restaurants and things to do, nightlife, 
then you should definitely, and swimmable beaches, Cabo San Lucas. If you want quiet, peaceful, not a lot of people, not a lot of noise, drive to activities, non-swimmable beaches, then you stay up here in the hotel resort area or in San Jose del Cabo, you think? I think so. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, another thing that's up here is this is a much, it seems to be much newer than Cabo San Lucas. Yes, of course, yeah. The restaurants seem to be newer, like just right outside our hotel, there's what, a half a dozen um, restaurants. We eat at the Italian restaurant just on the other side, just across the street from us. Just because we've had a week of Mexican food and wanted <laughs> something different at I this did. point, but it was very good. Well, the prices are about the same up here, do you think? Yeah, I was actually expecting it to be a little less expensive, but in some ways this is a nicer area and the prices maybe are a little bit higher because there's less competition. You know, there's less options. Yeah. And so that tends to keep the prices higher in the stores and in the, the couple of stores that there are and whatever. Hi everyone, we are here in San Jose del Cabo, downtown. This is the, in the art, art district. district. Very yeah. cool place, Very super neat. cool. A lot of art. Well, art, in. restaurants, great shopping, not really too touristy, not cheap stuff, kind of like it. So we're at a restaurant now called the Agave Kitchen. Uh, we hear that the tuna... Tostadas are the best. Is the best. This guy's telling us the best thing he's had on his entire vacation, so we're looking forward to trying it. Yes, so here's, this is the restaurant. There's Rich. Rich is still with us on vacation. And there's Agave Kitchen. All right, let's see what it tastes like. So this is the view from the Agave Kitchen. Okay guys, our overall experience with Cabo San Lucas was incredible. The fishing was amazing, the views were incredible, the, the sightseeing was over the top. We had a really good time. I think the whole family had such a great time that some of them are already planning their next trip back to Cabo San Lucas. Okay, another tip. Apparently, when you're buying tequila down in, in uh, Mexico, you have to be a little bit careful about uh, what you're buying. If you think you're getting a really good deal, you might not, because what happens is they'll take one of these fancy bottles like a uh, glas, glacia azul and refill it with another tequila, and you're not really getting a good deal. You're getting a, a fake in a used bottle. And there's lots of used bottles down here. It's a real popular tequila. But anyway, so when you're buying tequila, be careful. Okay, a little bit about uh, Uber and the airport. So um, Uber is can, cannot pick you up at the airport, so you have to get transportation. Um, usually there's a transport. We took a transport over to Cabo San Lucas, but on the way back, the family came back with the return trip on that, so we took an Uber back to the airport from the hotel, and that worked just fine. It was about a third of the price of transportation from the hotel or a taxi. Um, another thing you gotta know about Uber a little bit is most of the resorts don't let Uber on the property. So what you have to do, just do is walk down 
just down to the corner, down to the street, and then the Uber can pick you up there and they'll take you anywhere you want to go. So that's a little bit about uh, Uber and uh, Cabo. Guys, I just wanted to give you a few tips from our experience in Cabo San Lucas. Um, one of them was uh, buying tequila while you're there. Um, I get a few different brands and there, there's a few things. I'll show you what I what I bought and then I'll show you what um, what we learned while we were there. Let's go with the first one. This one is called Chihula. When you go to, to Mexico, everyone's a salesperson, right? So this was kind of a salesperson kind of a thing. When we were at our very first restaurant, which was the office, which was a lot of fun, by the way, um, they brought us out a sample of their this is their special tequila that they only sell there or you can only buy it there or whatever the story may be. I didn't see this anywhere else uh, while I was shopping or looking around or in uh, Cabo San Lucas. So, and it was very good. So of course we bought this. So good sales work on their part. Um, the next thing we were looking for is I have a really good friend here in Florida that sent me on a mission to find uh, this. Yeah, this was his favorite. This is, or something that he knew about. This is Jose Cuervo, and it's the Reserva um, uh, de, de la Familia, right? Um, I did try this one. This one is a very good tequila as well. Um, so this is for my good friend, Bruce. Next one was not as quite as expensive as a bottle, uh, but this was at a different uh, tequila store that we went to. Uh, this is called uh, Maja, or Ma Mahi, that's what it is. It's Mahi is what this one's called. Anyways, it was really good, so I had to buy this. This was kind of a afterthought kind of a thing. Again, good salespeople there. And then what the advice I wanna give you is when you go to the airport, sometimes uh, some of the more commercial brands, such as, as this one for my buddy Bruce, you'll pay a little bit less at the airport where you're in the uh, duty-free shop. The interesting thing was this in particular one they were all out of, but where I paid $200 for this bottle, US by the way, in the airport it was $150. So that's how much of a difference it can be. This one, for a matter of fact, was about, this is $90 US. And it was only at these little stores, these little uh, tequila stores where they have like, uh, one of them we went into Tequila Town, they had three hundred different types of tequila which is incredible it was a bunch and that's probably the only place you could buy these these small distillery type uh, tequilas um, when we came back through the airport there was one that I really wanted and it was it was out of my price range and and I didn't want to buy it but when we got to the airport this is called Clase Azul um, you've probably seen these in the bars are really cool and some people might know exactly what this is but um, it's a. It's also made by uh, Jose Cuervo, so it's a commercial brand in the store, uh, like Tequila Town. This is about a two hundred and fifty dollar bottle of tequila, and at the airport, this was one hundred and fifty dollars. So a big difference. There's a hundred dollar swing in price. So your my advice to you is make sure that if you buy tequila and you have a layover in the States, when you go through customs, make sure you leave room in your bag to put the extra bottles in wherever you may go if it's out of the country. So that's my advice for this trip. Another important piece of information that I found out while I was in Cabo San Lucas was um, when we were looking at, at these bottles, um, it was brought to my attention because there's a lot of bottles that have there are a lot of different prices everywhere you go for the exact same bottle, which is really interesting to me. And I was talking to um, one of the stores down there and he said, you gotta really watch when you're buying uh, tequila like this because it could be an old bottle with a different tequila inside, so a fake. And some things he got me to look at, or he told me to look at is the seal. Make sure the seal looks like a factory seal. See, this one still has a seal on it. And you gotta make sure that it has like the little tear thing that's something to look for in the, um, on the seal itself, there's on this in particular one, which is a class A Azul, there's that flower right there. On the fakes, it's a whole flower instead of that half flower. So that would be something to look for. So when you're buying expensive tequilas down in uh, Mexico, make sure if, if it's too good to be true, 
it might be not true. So be careful, you might be buying a fake if you're getting a really good deal on tequila. Cabo San Lucas was more of a fun town and we had a great time there and, and there were so many activities. That's where all the activities are. If you wanna go on a vacation, you wanna go where all the activities are, that's where you wanna go. When we went to uh, San Juan del Cabo, um, it was much more laid back, much more quiet. Um, we really enjoyed that as well. Our resort was amazing, we had an incredible time. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're going to want to do. By the way, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get to see upcoming adventures that we're gonna be on. Uh, we're gonna be posting once a week. Uh, so we're gonna be doing a lot of uh, discovery, mostly in the United States. We're gonna try to stay mostly in the United States uh, just because there's so much to do here. And I don't think a lot of people cover the United States quite as well. Everybody wants to go to other countries and, and whatnot, but there is so much to do right here in our own backyard and we want to show you that um, so we hope that you join us for future adventures be sure to check out our cabo san lucas adventure as well uh, we'll put a link in the uh, in the description for you if you want to see that one uh, we had a really good time there as well as san juan del cabo uh, so make sure that you uh, see both and then um, and then you can see the rest of our adventures as time goes on